Hi, I'm just out here in the uh, beautiful outdoors riding my bike. Thought I'd uh, take a moment and uh, just share some thoughts. One of my friends uh, did put up a video on uh, bright, shiny objects, and it got me thinking, and I wanted to share some of those thoughts with you. The first thing it got me thinking was, uh, you know, you can do anything you want in the world, pretty much, uh, but you can't do everything, says uh, one wise man once told me. And so the problem with bright, shiny objects are there's this promise, there's this excitement, there's this thrill of beginning something, and then unfortunately... Uh, it gets tarnished and nothing happens. And I happen to be guilty of the uh, bright, shiny object uh, syndrome. And in fact, what it, the way it looked like in my life has been, oh man, you got all these great projects and you know, just one of these just clicks. Man, oh man, you're going to make a fortune. And of course, after 20 odd years of that and no fortune to speak of, uh, <laughs> at least not the uh, fortune that everyone was expecting, it, I've come to realize that we need to avoid bright, shiny objects. We need to be very, very clear on what it is that we want to uh, do, that we want to accomplish. And instead of having these multiple streams of income, and I think that really was the beginning of the end for a lot of people. It's like, oh yeah, I've got to make multiple streams of income. I'm going to get a rental house, and I'm going to trade stocks, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and everything's always going to flow. And rather than getting streams, they got trickles. And the key to it, of course, is, is that you get one stream going really, really well, and then you move on to the next one. And I met a very interesting lady the other day who uh, is in the personal care product uh, arena, and she's been all over uh, Russia and Europe with her products, and she's now coming back to the United States and Canada to get them going here. And she said, yeah, I've got this great product. It does really well over in Europe. I can't wait to get it going here so that I can go on to the next thing. Not, I'm going to do all of these things at once. No, she's focusing on one thing. She's going to get it going, and she's going to move on from there. Now, the key to all of this is how you feel. You know, if you're really, really frustrated with your financial situation, then you really have to take a look at these bright, shiny objects, and you've got to really focus on just one area, whether it's the job that you've got, if it's the one, if you've got 10 opportunities, you've got to just pick one and go for it. If you're in my situation where I've got clients that I've been working with for 10 years that I love, I don't want to give up, but by working with them, I am giving up something. I'm giving up this bright shiny object right here that I know will make me millions and millions of dollars. But I'm quite okay with that and I'm quite okay with everything going at a far slower pace and it's not my goal to be a multi-millionaire anyway. It's my goal to be able to go to Central America for 10 weeks when I want to or to go to the Greek islands which I'm hoping to do in the next year uh, and to have a life to learn salsa. I'm taking salsa lessons. You know, like what's that got to do with internet marketing and podcasting and stock options? Nothing. It has everything to do with a life well lived. And that, of course, is part of the key. So if you're like me and you've had all these opportunities and none of them have turned into multi-billion dollar ventures yet, you're not the next Bill Gates, are you okay with that? If you are, no worries. If you're not okay with it, then you have to make some hard decisions. You have to say, you know what, I love you, but I can't work with you anymore. I love you, I can't work with you anymore. I love you, I can't work with you anymore because I'm working on this specific thing until it makes me my fortune. And that is the key. Like Bill Gates did not start, uh, you know, a software company and then go make cars, right? You know, uh, the, uh, you know, Steve Jobs didn't start Apple and then leave to start some film corporation company. Oh yeah, I guess he did. <laughs> but he only was working on one of them at a time, and that's the whole key: work on one thing at a time. And in my case. I'm going to be working on more things than one thing at a time because I'm not unhappy with my situation. In fact, I love it. I love the people that I'm working with and that's what gives me the juice and I'm not going to give that up. So part of this whole situation is understanding yourself, understanding where you're at, what it is that you want to do with your life and how you want to go about doing it. And then you've got to decide if you want to make changes or if you're just going to accept it the way that it is. And there's nothing wrong with accepting it the way it is. In fact, that's a big part of peace, acceptance. You know, I accept this is my life 
Now what do I do to change it if I'm unhappy with certain parts of it? Well, I'm unhappy with this part here. So that's why I'm out here <laughs> on my bike, which you can't see because it's up there. I just thought this would be a better place to, uh, to record. And I'm exercising, and I'm going to hot yoga, and I'm going to salsa dancing, and I'm getting out, and I'm making sure that this almost 60-year-old body is in the shape of a 35-year-old body. And actually, it's in better shape than it was uh, when I was 35, so I'm happy with that. I just need to get it in a little bit more, uh, <laughs> uh, in a little bit better shape, okay? So that's, that's one of my big goals. All right, so I'm focusing on teaching people how to podcast, because I think everybody has a message, and it should be expressed throughout the world, why not? I'm also helping people uh, learn how to trade stock options because in my world, in my plan, is I'm going to be building up my stock option cash account, if you want, will, so that I don't have to worry about money. I can go in and I can trade and in 10 or 20 minutes make, uh, make the money that I want to live on. And... Uh, And, of course, I love doing the courses on Udemy. I forgot it for a second, right? So I'm going to be continuing to make tons and tons of high-quality courses on Udemy and support the students. My goal is to get to 50,000, and then I'm going to set another goal to get to 100,000. And that's, uh, you know, so those are the things that I'm working on. And, you know, I know that if I just focused on Udemy and dropped everything else, i get there a lot faster. And I know if I dropped Udemy and everything else, and I'd be doing a lot better on my stock option trading a lot faster. And I know that I could teach a lot more people how to podcast if I dropped everything and I just taught them how to podcast. And, you know, I know that I could get my clients better results if I just dropped everything and focused on one client and their problem. It's not going to happen in my case. And I'm okay with that. I've accepted it. And the key to this all is avoiding the bright shiny objects deciding what it is that you want to accomplish what it is that you want to do and then when the world keeps giving you all of these oh get this software or, oh do this or learn that or something else you have to start saying no to those things unless it's specific to the results that you want to get and that I think that focus is the big key and the big problem now one of my mentors and he was only a mentor in terms of reading his books unfortunately uh, but he was an architect, and he, uh, some of the old buildings in Chicago, the Chicago skyline, when you look at the old buildings, he designed them. He designed a lot of the New York buildings in the 1930s. And when he was 70 or 75, he was actually a world champion figure skater, if you can imagine. So he did all of these things, and it was like, it was, how did you do? And he was a sculptor. It was amazing all the different things that he did. And how did he do those things? He dedicated one hour to one thing. And that's my challenge to you, is decide what it is that you want to do and then decide to put one hour towards it. Then take a break. Celebrate. Don't celebrate by getting a chocolate bar or an ice cream cone or something like that. Celebrate by, like, getting out here into nature and listening to the power boats go by, right? or getting some exercise, or doing something that's, you know, fun and you enjoy and doesn't put pounds on down here, right? And then, once you've done that celebration, whether it's 15 minutes or a half hour or an hour, you take your break, second hour. You just work on that one thing. Now, it can be the same thing, and it can be different things. So in my case, I'm scheduling one hour to work on my Udemy courses, and then I'm off. I'm going to spend one hour working on my stock options, then I'm off. I'm going to be spending one hour working on a client, and then another hour on a client, another hour on a client, another hour on a client, but that's a different story. And the thing is, is that you turn off Twitter, you turn off Facebook, you turn off Google+, you turn off your phones, and you dedicate one hour. Like Dave Lahani says, the power of an hour. It's amazing what you can get done in one hour when that's all that you're focusing on. So that's my challenge to you is pick an hour and practice something. Pick an hour and do some work. Pick an hour and it's a true hour. And if you do that four hours out of the day, you will be more productive than you've ever been before with minor exceptions if you're watching this. I mean, there might be the odd person who is way more efficient than that. But most of us aren't. Like, we, oh man, this is a little bit of a problem. Get on Facebook and chat with my buddy or something. So. 
That's my challenge to you. Focus, avoid the uh, shiny object syndrome, set your goals, and it's not just a financial goal. You've got to look at your mental goals. What do you want to learn? Your emotional goals, like what are your relationships like, your spiritual goals, whatever that may mean to you, right? And to me, it's the nurturing of the soul and the connection to the world and the universe and God and everything else around us. Then there's your physical goal, like what sort of shape are you in? If you're sitting by your computer or you're sitting in the car for hours and hours on end, not doing you any good at all. And sooner or later, your body's going to break down, and then you're going to wonder why you're one of those statistics. So don't do that. And then, of course, you've got your financial and your career or um, business goals, and then you work on those. And you can't balance them, by the way. You know, there are going to be times when, you know, I really got to... I'm going into the hospital, I'm going to be out, in the, I'm going to be in the hospital for 10 weeks because I did something stupid and I'm sick, or I didn't do anything stupid and I'm sick, and that's going to be my focus. Like, I'm not going to be answering any calls or doing any business or reading or learning or dancing or any of that sort of stuff. I'm going to be in a hospital bed, okay? Uh, that can happen, right? So, and it's the same with your business. It's going to be like, you know what, I really need to focus on this and get these things done, and then boy, oh boy, it's clear sailing and it's a huge advantage to me. So I'm not saying you need to balance. I need, I'm saying you need to consider those five areas of your life. You need to avoid the shiny object syndrome, which distracts you from your goals in those five areas. And then you need to focus and focus one hour at a time. And let me know, uh, you know in a couple weeks if it's made any difference, if, if it's helped you. And uh, I'm hoping it does. So thanks for listening, thanks for uh, joining me, and uh, we'll see you on the beaches of the world.